Okay, so let me transport you to Canary Wharf. Imagine for a moment that you are an investment banker. Can you feel your Armani suit? Imagine now that you're concerned about the behaviour of a colleague. So concerned that you speak to your boss about it. So, did you just blow the whistle? Are you now a whistleblower? Raise your hand if you think you are. I hope that that simple example has just demonstrated how hard it is to pin down the definition of whistleblowing. Despite the fact that it's a hot topic from Hollywood all the way to Canary Wharf. It's a difficult thing to, to pin down. It's actually a very recent term, first coined in the 1970s. And since then, its meaning has been shaped by prevailing social norms. Anything from a disloyal employee through to a courageous and socially aware hero. So let's return to Canary Wharf for a moment. This time, you're in the compliance department and you have a blank piece of paper in front of you. Imagine <coughs> that you've been asked to write the policy for your bank. Where do you start? <coughs> Who can blow the whistle? On what? To whom? Is it a duty or is it a right? How does it differ from other forms of reporting? So these are all questions addressed in my research, but they're practical questions too. So they were key, for example, in the recent case against Jess Staley, the CEO of Barclays. He disagreed with his internal whistleblowing team over whether a letter had come from a whistleblower, despite the fact that whistleblower was defined in their policy. I chose a bank for my example and the UK banking industry for my research for a reason. It's been mandatory to have whistleblown policies in UK banks since September 2016. Those policies must protect whistleblowers and provide internal channels for whistleblowing. That process is known as institutionalisation and it's a growing trend in other sectors too. For example, healthcare, policing and education. So far, my research has identified there are two broad approaches to defining whistleblowing. One is prescriptive, detailed, exclusive and works well within the systems and controls of an organisation. If it's not in the policy, it's not whistleblowing. The other is more conceptual, relies less on detailed definitions and more on the role and the motivation of a whistleblower. Think of things like um, speaking truth to power. But why does it matter? It matters to the employee to know whether they're caught by the policy or not. But it also matters, I hope, I've identified in my research that some people think that whistleblowing can't ever be captured in a policy. So is it time to blow the whistle on institutionalised whistleblowing? Thank you.